Hi everyone, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. We are here for our uh, pre-launch devotional and I am so excited to be worshiping with you all on this beautiful Mother's Day Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and I am Pastor Danielle and I want to start off by saying Happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful, wonderful, amazing superhero moms out there. We love you so much. We love you so much. To all the mothers of uh, the Way Worship Church, to all of uh, the Way Worship followers out there who have supported us every Sunday and every Wednesday. If you are a mom, we say Happy Mother's Day to you. You deserve a beautiful day. You deserve a wonderful dinner, a huge bouquet of flowers, an edible arrangement, some fancy jewelry, a designer gift. You deserve it, mom. You deserve it. At this time, I want to shout out a special Mother's Day to my mother, to my mother, Alba Henderson, a.k.a. Abuela, a.k.a. Baba, a.k.a. Miss H. She is a mother to Miss Henderson. She is a mother to so many people, not just me. But she has mothered my friend. She has mothered the children of her community. She has mothered the children um, in her church. And mom, I just want to say happy Mother's Day to you. I love you so much. I am here. I am because of you. And you absolutely deserve the world. And I am doing my best to make sure that I give it to you because you deserve it. I love you so much, mom. There's another Mother's Day, special Mother's Day shout out that I want to personally give. And it is, I call her my mother-in-law. Uh, I should call her my mother because honestly, I've, I've, I've moved Jay out the way. I'm the, uh, Pastor Jay out the way. I'm the biological child. I want to give a huge Mother's Day shout out to Evangelist Reed, a.k.a. Vi, a.k.a. Gigi the grandmother of Pastor Jay and the Gigi of my uh, beautiful children. Vi, we love you. Happy Mother's Day. Now, you know I couldn't make it without you. You have the receipts and the bank statements to prove it, Gigi. I love you so much. You are amazing. You are wonderful. You deserve the world. You deserve all the goodness that is coming to you, all the favor that has that God has bestowed upon you. I pray that you live a hundred more years because I cannot do this thing without you. You are beautiful, and I want to say happy Mother's Day to you you okay listen we have mothers at the way worship church we love y'all happy mother's day to you our mothers who are who are members of the way worship church we love you guys you guys are amazing you guys support us and i love you okay awesome happy mother's day to everybody listen we are here for our pre-launch devotional and I'm ex I'm so excited to be delivering a special Mother's Day um, sermon to you. I just want to stop to say thank you so much for your support. We are on the road to launch Sunday which is coming up the first Sunday in June Woo. and we are excited. We are excited because of your support we have been able to get things done to prepare for uh launch sunday but listen the work doesn't stop there and i want to invite you at this moment to partner with us through your giving we need we need your support because the uh it, it takes money not just to do the work of the Lord, but to do it in excellence, to make sure that it can get to you every Sunday in in a in an excellent way, to make sure that we can um, serve the community in an excellent way, to make sure that we are representing the kingdom of God in an excellent way. So I'm inviting you to sow and partner with us in your giving. Um, our cash app, you can sow. We have a few ways you can sow. The cash app and, and the different ways are there on the screen. Our cash app is cash tag the way worship church you can also go online at the way worship.org and follow the link there to give as well we appreciate you so much we thank you for your giving we thank you for your support because we could not do this without you thank you thank you thank you and i believe that when you partner with us that the lord will take care of you hallelujah listen let's just go to the lord in prayer hallelujah Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Father, we thank you today. Father, we glorify you today because you are worthy, because you are holy, and there's nobody like you. Father, we thank you, oh God. We thank you today for your love. We thank you today for your mercy and your loving kindness, Jesus, because there's, there's no other love greater than the one that you have given us, the one that you show to us. And Father, today, Father, we glorify you for your love. We thank you, Father, because where would we be without your love and your kindness and your mercy? Father, thank you for delivering us out of the hand of the enemy. Thank you for delivering us out of the hand of death. Father, thank you. Father, Father, for keeping us through sickness, Father, and through trial and through hard time, through persecution, through lack. Father, we thank you for your provision. We thank you that you have been Jehovah Jireh and you are Jehovah Rapha. Thank you, Father, that you are our banner and you are our peace. Father, you are our healer and you are our provider. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. We honor you. We bless you, Father, this morning, Father, as we stand before you. Father, we pray, oh God, that you would look upon all of the people. Father, who have gathered, Father, to watch the service. Father, I pray that you would look upon the people, Father, who are watching us. I pray, Father, that if there is anyone who needs healing, Father, even now that the healing will begin to take place. Father, I pray that if there is anyone who needs a breakthrough, who needs a financial miracle, Father, I pray that the way would begin to be uh, made even now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Father, if anybody is sick. Father, if there is anyone, Father, in their homes who, or in their cars, wherever they are, that needs deliverance. Father, I pray that angels be, will begin to minister to their souls right now in the name of Jesus. Father, as the word is going forth, Father, I pray that you would orchestrate events, oh God, that would cause the heart of men, Father, to be able to receive the word. I pray, Father, that the events surrounding, Father, uh, people coming to watch this service Father, would be the perfect event. Father, would be the perfect circumstance that causes the word to settle, that causes this to be the right word at the right time. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that the work you're doing in our communities and the work you're doing in our homes, Father, is one that will cause us to have a testimony to say that God came and visited me, that God came and visited us, and he's doing a work in our homes. He's starting revival in our cities and in our communities. Communities. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you who have begun a good work in us is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus' return. Father, thank you that you're completing the work. Thank you that you're starting the work. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you and I glorify you. I praise you. I give you the honor and the glory for you are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. We thank you and we praise you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just begin to continue to give the Lord just a praise right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, it's Mother's Day and, you know, we love our moms and our aunties and our God mommies and all of those mother figures that we have in our lives. And I'm grateful for... Uh, my children, I'm grateful for Jalen and Jonah and JL and, of course, Sincere. I'm grateful for all of my children. I'm grateful for the people that I mentor. I'm grateful for the people that I cover, for, for the people who call me mom, who call me mentor, who call me pastor. I love you guys so much. Thank you for giving me the honor of being in your lives and leading you and leading you to to uh, purpose, to destiny, to just a better a better uh, experience here as we journey towards uh, heaven. Hallelujah! But today, today, because it's Mother's Day, I was praying to the Lord uh, as we are on this journey of preaching the vision of our church. While we're preaching the vision, while we're mobilizing the vision of our ministry, I, I was praying to God, what you know. 
what aspect of the vision should we go to? And for those of you who don't know, the vision of the Way Worship Church is to pursue purpose, to perpetuate love, to preserve truth, and to prepare the way. Uh, and so we've been talking about... Um, uh, uh, pursuing purpose. We've been talking about pursuing purpose. We've been talking about preparing the way. And I believe that because of, not just because of the occasion, but because when we think of Mother's Day, we think of all the love that our mothers have given us. I thought that it would be appropriate to talk about love, to talk about perpetuating love, moving into the part of the vision of our church that speaks on the love of God. Because we thank God for the love of our mothers. We thank God for the love of our aunties and the love of our sisters because we couldn't we, we, we couldn't be who we are if it wasn't for the community of strong women that we have around us. But the truth is that even be even uh, though that love is awesome. Even though that love is strong, even though that love is grounding, there is no love like the love of God. And while mama's love can hold you, and while mama's love can comfort you and guide you, mama's love cannot save you. Mama's love cannot get you into past the pearly gates uh, uh, to see the face of Jesus. Mama's love cannot save you from the, from, from the gates of hell. While it is mama who is praying that you experience the love of God, it is only the love of God that can bring you eternal life. It is only the love of God that can save you. And I think that it was because of mama's love coupled or supplemented with the love of God that many of us have been saved from the snare of the enemy and found ourselves in the doors, at the doors, in the altar, at the altar of the church. And so today I want to talk about the part of the vision of our church that speaks to perpetuating love. If you can just put it in the comments, perpetuate love. There's no, there's no special title. There's no special uh, uh, tagline, but that in itself is good enough. Perpetuate, perpetuate love. Hallelujah. 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 We're talking about perpetuate love. Hallelujah. Um, I just need my phone. I want to uh, just go to the scripture so that I can read it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Today we're going to, excuse me, today we're going to John 3, 16. Now, I should bring somebody random from the, from the audience who's watching us. I should pull them out of the, the audience and ask them to join me live and tell me what this scripture says. This is a memory verse of all memory verses. This is a childhood memory verse. If you've been in church like me, then you know the words of John 3, 16. But guess what? I'm going to read it anyway. I'm not going to call on you. I'm not going to send a surprise uh, notification request for you to join me on the live. But I'm going to read the words of Jesus in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. The King James Version, the way most of us memorized it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the scripture that we will be using for today. Uh, John chapter 3 verse 16. There's another scripture that I just want to quickly bring to your attention that I want to use as a supplemental text today. And that is Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 starting at verse 14. And it says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, 
that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I'm going to read that verse again. Uh, it says, it says that uh, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That is the word of God and it is truly blessed and blessed and we honor it. Listen, the love of God, we're talking talking about perpetuate love. The love of God, when we think of the love of God, we have to understand that the love of God is not like anything we've ever um we've ever experienced or understood or could know within this human experience. It's not something that we're used to. It's not something common. It's not something that we can have, that, that we have anything else to compare it to. The love of God is not like a daisy. The love of God is not like a rose where you can compare it to other flowers. The love of God is not from this world. And so the love of God is not like any other love that, that you have ever experienced. It's not like mama's love. It's not like daddy's love. It's not like boyfriend or girlfriend or hubby or wifey's love it's not even like the the love of a child which can be so, uh, described as some of the deepest the deepest love you could ever feel the love of a child and the love for a child but no the love of God is something different and while these other types of love may have uh, traits that 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 um, come from God's love because these are indeed relationships that God has ordained for us to have this love is not the same. This love is special. This love is different. And before we can talk about perpetuating the love of God, and when we say perpetuate, we're talking about setting into continuous motion. We're talking about putting into play forever the love of God. And we, when we say perpetuate love, we're talking about creating a culture that always displays the love of God. We're talking about creating a culture that puts the love of God continually in motion, never stopping. Every time you see us, every time you talk to us, anytime you do something with us, it's with the love of God. The love of God continually coming out of us always and that is what we mean when we say perpetuate love but in order to perpetuate the love of God you have to know what the love of God is you have to understand what the love of God is I know I'm not preaching to you about a house a car I know I'm not preaching to you about all your dreams and your goals coming true today but I need to teach to you about the love of God because the love of God is the base it is the foundation for which we do anything, for which we experience the supernatural, or for which we can even accomplish our goals, we need to start at square one, which is the love of God. So let me explain to you what the love of God is. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You mean to tell me that the point, how this whole thing started, the reason, the cause for this whole thing is rooted and grounded in love? Absolutely. The reason for the earth, the reason for Adam, the reason for the cross, the reason for Jesus is love. And I know we were created to worship God and I know that we're told that we were created to bring God glory and while that is true the reason all of this happened the reason he created us to give him glory is not because he's some self-centered selfish God that sits on the throne and just wants people to worship him because he's conceited no the reason he created us to worship him is because he loves us he loved us before he knew us he loved us knowing how it would turn out knowing how uh, we would betray him, knowing how we would put him on the cross, he still decided in eternity past that he would create a people who loves him. 
or who he loves, and then he would give the people that he loves an opportunity to love him back. He created us with love in mind. It all started, he has the angels in the heavens who cry, holy, 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 but he loved you enough to create you. He has the angels who go back and forth and all they do is worship him. He's not short of worship. He's not short of attention. He's not short of any of those things. He's not short of glory. Yet this earth is here because of love. The Bible says that for God so loved the world. We're going to break down what the love of God is. The love of God. It says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only. We can stop there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only. Now before I go there, I want to let you know, I want to give you some historical context here. Jesus is explaining this concept of love to a Pharisee, to a priest of the temple named Nicodemus. Nicodemus, he was a devout teacher of the Jewish law. He was a devout teacher of the Old Testament, yet he was so fascinated with what Jesus was teaching. How can I know the law of God? How can I know? I mean, I know the Torah front and back, and I teach it, and I have students under me. Yet this man called Jesus is teaching something that is pulling at my spirit. It's pulling at me, and it's, 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 it's saying something to me that there's more to the Torah than what I know. It's saying something to me. It's telling me that the Torah is pointing to something more, that, that there's more to this picture. And Nicodemus, he he he's curious. He he's 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 fascinated with Jesus, but but because of who he is, he's not allowed to he's not allowed to be fascinated. He's not allowed to be interested. And so he comes to Jesus secretly at night, and he asks Jesus this this question uh, about his teachings. He's he's asking Jesus. He's picking Jesus' brain, and Jesus says to him, Nicodemus, in order to be saved, in order to inherit. The kingdom of God, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is like, born again? You, you know how old I am, Jesus? How, how can I go back into my mother's womb? And, and Jesus tells Nicodemus, you don't, you're, you're not understanding these heavenly principles. You're, 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 you're not picking up on, on what I'm teaching you. And, 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 and if I talk to you, it's funny because I'm talking to you about earthly things like birth and, and, and things like that. And you're not going to, you're not grasping it. So why would I, why would I teach you about something heavenly and expect you to grasp it? And so Jesus then, he takes Nicodemus back to an old Testament um, story that he should be familiar with since he's a priest, right? And he says, do you remember what when Moses, when the, when the people of Israel had leprosy and they were dying and they were digging graves and Moses crafted, Moses got the instructions from the Lord to craft a serpent's head and to raise up the serpent's head and whoever looked upon the serpent would be saved. Now, this was a problem for the children of Israel because why would God use a serpent head to bring them deliverance? A serpent head was pagan. A serpent head was something taboo it was something uh how can i say demonic it wasn't something that they usually associated with their god right the serpent was the one who tricked eve in the garden and so why would god give moses instructions to do something seemingly opposite of what they understood but the truth was that the instructions was moses lift up the staff with the serpent on it and whoever is crazy enough or strong enough to believe and look upon it they will be delivered from death so it is that the son of man be raised up and whoever whoever believes and looks upon jesus shall be saved from death. And I know that this is crazy. I know that this is a crazy concept. I know that this is hard for you to understand. I know that this is beyond your imagination. It's beyond your understanding. It's beyond what you've been teaching. But God so loved the world 
Th this is exactly how it went. He showed him how God's been working in taboo ways beyond the understanding of people from the time of Moses to the time of Jesus. And he said, the reason why I've been doing things that are beyond your understanding is because I want you to understand that the love of God goes beyond your understanding. God loved the world that he gave his only son. And Nicodemus, if you want to be saved, you have to believe on the crazy love of God that sent me, Jesus, into the earth to save you. And so Jesus, he, he says this statement, for God so loved the world that he gave his only. The first thing that we have to understand about the love of God is that the love of God is self-sacrificing. The love of God is self-sacrificing he gave his only not his extra right he, he n not his not his second not his not his substitute <laughs> but god gave his only he didn't give it from a place of comfort he didn't create another messiah but he became the Messiah. Because if we really understand it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, and then we beheld the Son of God, right? We beheld his glory as the Son of God, then we know that Jesus is God. The same John that says, the same John that we're reading this gospel, uh, uh, we're hearing Jesus talk in the beginning, says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the Father as what? The only begotten son. And so this is what you have to understand. God didn't create the Messiah. God didn't create Jesus. Woo, here it is. But he became he became flesh. And so we, when we say for God so loved the world that he gave his only, what you have to understand is that he extended himself into the earth, which means he humbled himself to be subject to the laws and to the rules of time and space. The all-powerful God, he came down to humble and subject himself to all that comes along with the human experience because he loved us. Many of us, Many of us give when we can. <laughs> Many of us give when we can afford to. Many of us, even, even when it comes to giving our last, we give our last because we've calculated that this sacrifice is safe. Y'all don't want to talk to me, right? We give our last when it's safe enough to give our last because our last is on the heels of another paycheck. And so it's safe enough to give our last. Our last. We sacrifice when it's safe. We give when we have enough to make it between the time when we're giving now and the next check. But God's sacrifice wasn't safe. God's, God's sacrifice wasn't safe. He didn't come because he knew he had another son coming up the rear. He, he, he made the most risky investment of all kind, which is to wager his life for the love of a flaky humanity. God's love is self-sacrifice because he gave his only. Amen. He gave his only. I wish somebody would type in the comments, he gave his only. God's love, the first thing we must know about God's love is that it is self-sacrificing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Here's the next part that we should understand. What The next thing we should understand about God's love is that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him. Whoever. Somebody type that. Whoever. God's love is beyond preference and prerogative. Listen, I know, I know that, I know that we like to live our lives and we like to have our lives be led by our desires, our likes and our dislikes. That's the luxury of living in this world. We get to choose what we like and what we dislike based, based on our preferences and our prerogatives. But God's love is not based on preference. God's love is not based on prerogative for it says whoever believes in him. Now, 
Paul calls this the mystery of God that he always, listen to this, God always had it planned to bring all nations unto him. I know, I know some of you, I heard some of you say, no, God had a preference. He chose the Jews. God had a preference. He chose the Hebrew people and then he chose the Gentiles. But let me explain to you what the Bible says. While he came to the Jews, he did not only come for the Jews and then changed his mind to include the Gentiles. No, no, no. God is sovereign and God is omniscient. And so he came to the Jews he, because he chose them to be a vessel to bring all men to him. How do I know that it was planned from the beginning for God to choose whoever, for God to allow everybody to come to him how do i know that it was the plan from the beginning not just to come to the hebrew children only because he told abraham that he would use abraham to make him a great nation and through him all nations would come into worship with God. This is the point of God's love for be, from the beginning. That whoever believes. See, see, we grow up in a world where we are led by our preferences and our desires. We, we do things because we want to. We, we make friends because we have common likes and dislikes. We, we also, unfortunately, have prejudices. Prejudices that are ran by our preferences that cause us to create boundaries and keep certain people out of certain things who don't share the preferences that we have. But God's love is beyond preference. And God's love is given, listen, to anyone. The Bible says, whoever believes. Many of us have rejected love and many of us have rejected community because while somebody may love us, we don't like them. <laughs> I know I stepped on somebody's toes right there. Yeah, yeah, somebody was coming to show you some love. Somebody was coming to bring you some flowers. Somebody was coming to, to maybe take you on a date. Somebody was coming Somebody was coming to maybe repair uh, uh, the spirit of rejection that you've lived your life with. But because they didn't meet your preferences, you rejected the love that was coming to you somebody was trying to love you but because you didn't like them you rejected them and we even reject God because God doesn't fit into all of our likes and our preferences many of us reject God because God doesn't fit the list of all the things we want God to look like but even with all of that even with all of that God who is perfect God, who is perfect, could prefer a type of person to love. God, who is perfect, has the right to require things in order for him, for us to receive his love. But even though he's perfect, he decided that he wouldn't have no preferences. He decided that he would go beyond all the things that he hates and dislikes and said. And says, excuse me, that the only thing I'm requiring for those who want to have my love, for mankind to receive my love, is believe. He said, whoever believes, it's beyond preference. It's beyond prejudice. It's beyond those things. And it's into belief. Look at somebody and say, I'm so glad you don't got to like me. <laughs> for me to believe. I'm so glad I don't got to fit into your mold. I just got to believe. I'm so glad I don't got to have it all together. I just got to believe. And sometimes we get it twisted thinking that we have to meet all the commandments for God to love us. No, no, no. The commandments were to show us that although God is holy and although there is a standard and although there is a way that we could live, we cannot live that way way without his love there's no way we could do it without his love there's no way I could live and not lie without his love there's no way I could live and not steal without his love there's no way I could live and not want to serve another God without his love although he gave me the law I cannot complete the law without his love and he even decided to take that burden of completing the 
the law away from me. For God so loved the world that he sent his son. And his son didn't come into the world to condemn the world. That's the next verse. But that the world through him might be saved. It's a love. It's a love beyond what I could do. It's a love beyond his preference. It's a love beyond your preference. It's a love that says whoever believes. Whoever believes. So God's love is self-sacrificing. He gave his only. God's love is beyond preference and prerogative. He said whoever. And listen, this is the last thing. God's love cancels out death and brings life. For whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The love of God cancels death because in God is life. And God is love, so his love brings life life that that that's it for that part there, there's really not more to explain about the love of God uh this part about the love of God it cancels the death sentence it cancels the death sentence God loves the world and he came into the world so that the world could be saved and so God's love is self-sacrificing God's love is beyond prerogative and God's love cancels death and brings life so now now that we have an understanding about God's love, I can preach to you about perpetuating it and setting it in motion. In order, in order, listen, I know that you thought that that was the sermon, but it's Mother's Day and we didn't sing today, so I get to preach to you a little longer. In order to perpetuate the love of God, right, you first had to know what it was, and I explained it to you. It's self-sacrificing. It's beyond preference. It cancels death and brings life. In order to perpetuate the love of God, now that we know what it is we can talk about perpetuating it we can talk about setting it into motion forever in the earth in order though in order for you to perpetuate the love of God you must first experience it listen in order for you to be a conduit and an expresser and a giver of God's love, you must first experience it. God's love for you is your first stop. Pastor Jay said this, God's love for you is the first stop on your journey to deeper. As you want to know God more, as you want to experience the supernatural, as you want to do more and more things for God, you must first start at his love. You cannot perform a miracle without the understanding of God's love you cannot you, you 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 there's no way you cannot operate in the supernatural effectively without first having a revelation of God's love and here's the thing you need God's love we're, we're moving into our, our scripture in Ephesians you need God's love to even have the strength to understand that uh that that you need God's love to even have the strength to understand that his love goes beyond your knowledge. His love goes beyond your knowledge. You need God's love to even have the strength to understand the truth about God's love. I'm going to explain it to you. The, the, the Bible says in Ephesians, he said that I pray that you being rooted and grounded in love would be strengthened uh, in your inner man by the spirit of God to understand the, the depth, the height, uh, uh, and the breadth of the love of God so that you can experience the fullness of God. The fullness of God is Jesus. And in order to have the fullness of Jesus, which is his power and his resurrection, you need the strength to know that his love can go beyond what you know. But you got to be strong to deal with the fact that his love is beyond us. Let me help you. You ever, you ever had somebody call you and ask you, they about to deliver bad news, and what's the first thing they ask you? Are you sitting down? Right? Right? 
When somebody's calling you to give you bad news, they say, listen, I have something to tell you. Are you sitting down? Because what you're going to need is strength to handle the truth about the reality that you're, uh, the truth about the information that you're about to receive. And it's the same thing with the love of God. We have to be strong enough to handle the truth about the love of God. And the truth about the love of God is that it goes beyond what you think it is. I know you don't think that's something that you need to have strength to handle, but when you're in a situation and you don't understand how this is God's love, that's when you need the strength to know that although this situation doesn't seem loving, although this situation is hard for me to deal with, Although this situation doesn't seem like there's a way out, I have strength because I'm rooted in his love to know that even in this situation, God still loves me. So you got to be strong to deal with the fact that his love is beyond you. His love is some heavy stuff to grasp. And before we can even get the strength to understand the vastness of his love, we have to be rooted in his love. His love is the base. His love is the structure, yeah. and his love is the substance that fills it all up. Let me say it again. His love is the base, his love is the structure, and his love is all the things that go inside it. Somebody say, it's his love for me. It's his love for me. You, you got to understand what's happening here in Ephesians. I believe Paul, he's in prison and he's being persecuted again as per usual. And Paul tells the saints that while he's dealing with this, while he's going through persecution, that this is love and this is glory for them. And, and, and that they would need the strength to understand that the love of God goes beyond what they can understand. They, they couldn't quite understand the reason for such persecution again. They couldn't quite understand why Paul again is going through this. But Paul was trying to explain to them that the love of God is active beyond their emotions. The love of God is active beyond their understanding. And the love of God is active beyond anger within their current situation they would need strength to grasp the truth that even in persecution even in hard times even in death even in a pandemic even in sickness God is love God's love is deeper than all of this and here's a little hint when you find glory in a trial when you find glory in peril you can be sure that you're in God's love why is it that you're going through something so deep but you don't want you don't feel like giving up how is it that you're going through something so strong yet you're living to see another day because when you can see how glory is coming out of something so negative that my friend is when you're in the love of God and from this love is the fullness of God who is Jesus Christ and according to that power which now works in you we can see the supernatural that does what the scripture calls it exceeding abundantly above what we can ask or think we can't understand how his love is in this trial we can't understand how his love is in this peril but his love is so deep that now the trial becomes a set and the trial becomes a scene for a miracle that's the purpose of his love, to work out a miracle even in the midst of your dying, of your dire situation. The Bible says that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. This is why you need the strength to understand that his love goes beyond you because when you don't have strength and when you don't have trial, it's you don't have a triumph in, in your trial. It's his love that's really setting up the trial to be a scene for a miracle. So that you can experience the fullness of God. From out of you comes the resource to change your situation around. Many of us haven't experienced God's love because we haven't spent enough time naked before him. Listen. In order to perpetuate God's love, I'm almost done. In order to perpetuate God's love, you first have to experience it. And many of us, we haven't really experienced the love of God because we haven't spent enough time naked before him. What do I mean? He said, Adam, where are you? 
right? In the beginning, he said, when after Adam sinned, he said, Adam, where are you? And Adam takes the first few moments to explain his indiscretions to an omniscient God. Adam, Adam, the, the first thing he does when God asks him where he is, knowing that God knows everything, Adam takes the first few moments to try to give God a disclaimer about his nakedness. And listen, it is not until Adam surrenders his covering that he experiences the love of God that gives him a more suitable covering. Listen, let me say it again. Adam realizes he's naked. He makes a covering out of fig leaves. He tries to hide his nakedness. And then God walks in the garden and says, Adam, where are you? And Adam steps out in front of God with his cute little fig leaf uh, tunic skirt thing and says, oh, God, you know, I'm naked and um, all of this other stuff. And, and, and it's not until Adam surrenders his fig leaf covering. And gives it to God that God gives uh, that Adam now experiences the love of God and God gives him a more suitable covering. Watch this before Adam even utters a word of repentance. Adam didn't say, God, I'm so sorry that I'm naked and I made this uh, covering of fig leaves. And then God says, OK, Adam, now let me go kill an animal skin and cover, you No, before Adam even repented, he had to surrender his fig leaf covering covering and receive a more suitable covering from God. What am I saying? Before God wants to hear you say, I'm sorry, he wants you to surrender your coverings. He wants you to surrender your validations. He wants you to surrender your safety nets, your excuses, your vices, and be exposed in his presence. It wasn't until Adam admitted that the fig leaf covering wasn't good enough and gave it to God that he experienced the love of God. God knows that it's not all your fault. He knows that you lie. He knows that you gossip. He knows that you're a jealous rage. He knows that you're frustrated. He knows that you're lonely and you're hurt and you're depressed and you're naked. But guess what? He also knows that you were raped. He also knows that you were lied to. He also knows that you were abandoned and mistreated. And he has a more suitable covering for you that is not based on your sorry, but it's based in his love. And he's already provided your healing. Stop trying to explain to God and, and just surrender the covering. Surrender the disclaimer and be naked and let him cover you. Many of us, listen to this, many of us are in communities and many of us are in relationships that thrive off of our covering. They, they thrive off of our disclaimers. Let me, let me explain it to you. We have friends who have bad attitudes, and, and, and we have friends who have bad attitudes to cope with the nakedness of rejection, and now we have a community of sisters with bad attitudes, and we build community around that. We, 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 we have friends who gossip to cover their loneliness, and, and gossip is one of our coverings, and so we build community around the fact that we like to gossip because that's our covering. That's us trying to hide our nakedness. And so we build communities around our coverings and our disclaimers. We build relationships around our vices because that's how we cope with our nakedness. Uh, because we're afraid to show the nakedness of our rejection in his presence. But listen, if you surrender that poor fig leaf covering of a bad attitude, if you surrender that poor fig leaf covering of gossip, of jealousy, and show your rejection in his presence, he will Will cover you with love and sonship. God loves you. Woo! God loves you. Before you can perpetuate the love of God, you have to experience the love of God. Ha! Reban soul, taban father in the name of Jesus. I pray that those watching even now would surrender their coverings, would surrender their fig leaf coverings. Father, I pray that people would be brave enough to be vulnerable in your presence. I pray that people would come to you naked naked and rejected. They would come to you naked and jealous. They would come to you naked, full of the lies and the deceit that they have harbored in their hearts, that they would come to you naked and vulnerable and stop trying to uh, cover up and give you a disclaimer but father I pray that as the people come to you vulnerable that they would experience the love of God that is a more suitable covering for 
for our indiscretions. The love of God that is a more suitable covering for our, our, our shortcomings. Father, I pray that the love of God would cover the people. Father, I pray that they would begin to experience the love of God. Father, as they surrender the bad attitude. Father, you know why. Father, you know why. Show them that you know who hurt them. Show them that you know somebody misused them. Show them that you know somebody mistreated them so that they could surrender their coverings and receive the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you can perpetuate the love of God, you have to experience it. But the second part is that you have to abandon your perception of love for his definition of love. Before you can perpetuate the love of God, you have to abandon your perception of love for his definition of love, or better yet, for him. You have to abandon your perception of love for him because God is love. And then we must abandon our perception of love for him. And here's what happens. Here's what happens when we abandon our way of loving, you know, because we have a way of loving and we have a definition. We have a list. We have a book of, of how we should be loved and how love should go. But here's what happens when you abandon your way of loving for God. We begin. Now, this is going to be deep. This, 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 is, this might offend you a little bit. But when you abandon what you think love is, when you abandon your perception of love for the Father, you begin to feel compassion for the people who loved you wrong. <laughs> oh, I know you felt that one. When you abandon what you think love is, when you abandon the way you think you should be loved, when you abandon your perception of love, I know it's Mother's Day and your mama, you ain't talked to her in three, four, five, six years. I know it's Mother's Day and you're using the pandemic, you know, the pandemic as an excuse to harbor the grudge against your mother. I know that it's Mother's Day and you think that your mother did you wrong, but when you abandon all of that and receive the definition of what God said is love, the the fact that it's self-sacrificing, right? And the fact that it's beyond preference, right? And the fact that it cancels death and brings life. When you abandon your perception of love for God, then you start to feel compassion for mama who left you for a drug habit. You start to feel compassion for the man who did you wrong. Why? Now, no, this compassion is not an excuse to stay in a toxic and abusive relationship. No, not at all. But this compassion is a shift of a, of a mind change. It's a shift of an understanding um, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. You realize that not only has somebody wrongly loved you, but you have loved somebody wrong because you loved somebody from the limit of your perception of love. While you may not have abused somebody, while you may not have abandoned for somebody for an addiction, you still only loved people from the limit of what your definition was. And if you was hurt, you only loved people from a place of being hurt. But when you abandon all of that for the Father, then you start to feel compassion for those who loved you wrong because you now see that he loves you even though you've been loving wrong. You have in order to perpetuate God's love, you have to let go of your love. Ooh. You have to let go of how you think love should be, right? This is the part that says it's without preference. This is the part that says it's without prerogative. In order to perpetuate the love of God, you must first experience it, and then you have to abandon your perception of love for the Father. And when you do that, it sparks forgiveness for those who have loved you wrong and correction of how you now love. Finally, Finally, followers and worshipers of the way, in order to perpetuate God's love, this one is going to challenge you a little bit more than the last one, but in order to perpetuate God's love, you have to have God's love for God. You have to have God's love for God because you can't love God's people the way God loves them unless you love God the way he loves you. You cannot love God's people the way God loves them unless you love God 
the way he loves you. What does that mean? God's love is selfless. God so loved the world that he gave his only. That's how he loved you. But now do you love him that same way? When is the last time you gave God your only? When is the last time you gave God your last? And not because it was safe, because there was something more coming, but it was actually your last, last. When was the last time you gave God your only? Come here, Abraham. Abraham sacrificed sacrifices Isaac he God gives him God gives him a order he gives him um, um, an instruction to take his only son Isaac to the top of the mountain to sacrifice him before the Lord now here's the thing Isaac was a promise Isaac, it was a promise, and it wasn't Abraham's second, third, fourth, fifth promise. It was Abraham's only promise. It was the promise that he was, listen, Isaac was the one that was going to make Abraham a great nation. And so if he sacrifices the promise, he sacrifices the future. And it wasn't like Sarah was popping out kids. You remember the Hagar situation? And even that thing went south. So it's not like he had another Hagar to give him another Ishmael. It's not like this was a miracle. And it's not like Sarah was just having more babies. No, Isaac was his only. And when was the last time you gave God your only? Do you love God like he loves you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only. When was the last time you gave God something that was your only? Maybe God wants your promise. Oh, I feel that. Maybe God wants your promise. God wants your dreams. God wants your goals. And I know that doing it the Christian way, I know that if you submit your goals to the salvation, the, the narrow route, if you submit your goals to the church, if you if you submit your goals to a holy way, then you feel like you might not make as much money or or you feel like if you show them that you're saved you might not get that many followers but let me tell you something if if did you not know that there was a ram in the bush? God doesn't want your only because he needs your only. But God wants your only because he wants to see if he can trust you with the abundance that he's always had reserved on the side for you. But if you won't give him your only, how does he know that you'll give him when you have plenty? He loved you, so he gave his only. And let me tell you something, God had many prophets, God has tons of angels, he didn't have to give his only, but he did because he loves you. Now, do you love him the same way? Because in order to perpetuate his love, in order to spread his love to his people, you've got to love him. Come on, mamas, it's Mother's Day. If somebody don't love your kids, it's like they don't love you. You can't come around me and disrespect me, talking about you going to talk to and love my kids. It don't work like that, so why would it work? work like that for God. You can't share love to his people if you don't love him. And it's not just any love, it's his love. And because it's his love and he is love, then you have to show him the same love that he's showing you. Okay, so God's love is self-sacrificing. He gave his only. God's love is beyond preference. God's love is beyond prerogative. When was the last time you loved God but you didn't like it? When was the last time his love challenged you beyond your prerogative and you obeyed? When was the last time your love for God challenged you to do something that you didn't like? Challenged you to praise for somebody you couldn't stand? Challenged you to give? Oh, uh, Challenged you to witness in a neighborhood you were too afraid to walk in? When was the last time that your love for God challenged you to do something that you didn't like but you did it anyway. Do you love God enough to love him beyond what you want to do? Do you love God enough to love him beyond what you what you can choose to do? Because here's the thing. God gives us freedom, right? And and I'm reminded of, um, I'm reminded, me and Pastor Jay, we talk about the people in our high school who used to wear the long denim skirts and stuff. And the, you know, the whole, the Spanish holiness community. I praise God for them. And they used to wear the long denim skirts with the socks and here we are free in Jesus talking about well I could speak in tongues and go to the movies I could speak in tongues and wear my pants I you're not more saved than me but here's the thing just 
because they could wear their pants. They chose to wear the long skirt and God honored it because they didn't like it, but they felt it's what they needed to do to please God. I'm showing you that when your love and your sacrifice for God goes beyond what you like, there's a blessing in that. They did it because they loved God. They wore the long skirts because they loved God. And I know some of you want to get into a legalist argument with me. We know that some legalism came out of that. We're not talking about that. Because before it became legalism, the old saints really thought that this is what I got to do to be holy. And while this skirt is restricting me, I love the Lord, so I'm going to wear it. While the lipstick makes me look more sexy, I love the Lord, so I'm going to take it off. I don't want to look plain, Jane. I don't want to be stuck in my skirt but I love God so I'm going to do it and that was the premise the love of God was the foundation of holiness and how many how many of us can say that we love God beyond our preferences no 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 our love for God lets us know that we're free enough to love God and do something but just because you can do it will you sacrifice it to show God you love him it goes beyond preference if God can say whosoever will you say father whatever you want me to do I'll do it father wherever you want me to go I'll go father whoever you want me to talk to I will I don't care if I don't like them I don't care if we don't share likes I don't care if, if they don't meet my list of, of who should receive your love I love you beyond my preference and finally the love of God finally the love of God it cancels death and it brings life what does your love for God bring life to? Do you love God? Listen, it says that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have ever everlasting life. He loves you enough to bring life to you. But is your devotion dying? Do you love God but your devotion is dying? Do you love God but there are hopeless situations around you? What what, when was the last time your love for God brought life to a hopeless situation? When was the last time your love for God put a smile on somebody who's struggling with anxiety and depression? Put a smile on their face. How can you say that you love God, but there's no life around you? Life is not. Life is the signature of God. And if you have the love of God on the inside of you, we should see, we should see buds. We should see life around you. Do you, God loves you enough to bring you life, but do you love him enough to share his life? The love of God should bring life. And on this Mother's Day, on this Mother's Day, I, I, I challenge you, are you hiding your love for God? On, on, the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. On this day, I challenge you to be vulnerable in his presence so you can, so you can experience, experience his love. I challenge you to let go of your perception of love for the fullness of the Father. And I challenge you to love God the way he loves you so that we can set in continuous motion the love of God in the earth so that we can perpetuate love. Father, I thank you for your love. Father, I thank you for, for your spirit, for you are love. That is what you're made of. Father, I ask you that, that you would help us to grow spiritually mature, Father, so that we can love you the way you love us, so that we can love your people with your love, Father, so that in the, in the fibers of our being, in the culture of our movement, in the culture of our church, in, in the culture of our communities, Father, we perpetuate your love. Father, I pray that if anyone is not saved, that they would experience your love and say yes to you today. Father, I pray that, that as we uh, love you, Father, that you would bring life, Father, to strange situations, even with our mothers, even with our fathers, even with our daughters. Father, I pray, Father, that love, love would begin to pop up, Father, in our week. Father, that love, the love of God would confront us this week. Father, and give us wisdom, Father, on how to love, Father, and handle the situations and the circumstances that we're in with your love, with the wisdom and through the perception of your love, through the guidance of your love. Father, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Listen, guys. Hold up.
Oh, it's Pastor Jay. Hey, y'all. Hey, everybody. So it's Mother's Day, and today was supposed to be Mother's Day with Pastor Danielle, but I could not, I could not let her go on without wishing her a very special Mother's Day, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. My wife has been mother to not only our four children, but she has been mother to so many. She has cooked meals for, gone shopping <laughs> for, gone out of her way to raise other people's kids. And baby, we just honor you. We salute you. Thank you for all that you are. Y'all, she had to be my mother sometimes. She picked up my socks from off the floor. <laughs> she, she had to be my mother. And baby, we love you. We appreciate you. I love you now too. Now I'm going back. Okay. okay. All right. Good <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much. I love y'all so much. Listen, listen, we will see you um, next Sunday right here at 6 p.m. Um, and I am so excited to uh, just continue to have these moments with you. It is launch. It is launch. Launch. The launch is coming up upon us. So listen, guys, these next few weeks is the last pre-launch devotionals that we're going to have. And then we go into church. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's crazy. It's crazy. But it's this and more. It's this and more. And so I'm inviting you, listen, to be a part of the Way Worship Church. If you are not saved and you want to be saved, please send us a message. If you need prayers, please send us a message. If you would like to join the Way Worship Church, please shoot us a message and somebody will get with you on with instructions on how to do all those things. Listen, I'm inviting you one more time. I'm inviting you to give. Listen, we have some experience expenses and we want to make sure that this experience continues to be great and that uh the launch and everything is done in excellence and uh the people of god are taken care of i have my very good friends traveling from all over the united states coming to be with us to make this a great occasion and to make sure the way worship church moves forward in excellence and we can't do that without your support so i'm inviting you to give thank you so much for everything i love you guys and i'll see you next week bye bye